What's up, y'all? I got a banger from Gerbert Johnson. Let's get straight into it. How you ever love somebody and they broke your heart? <laughs> yes, I have. Seventh grade was rough for me. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Millions of people have been asking me, Hey, Gerbert, why are you always talking about all this incel stuff? Millions what, do you not have any bitches? <laughs> Here's the thing about this this question. It's a very interesting question in that no one ever seems to to ponder the possibility that maybe it's is that don't have me. Anyways, I decided to talk to a dating therapist to uh, see if I could find a good match. I don't know, man. I feel like I'm a decently handsome guy. I try to put in effort to my appearance. I work out, whatever. It's just I don't really know where to start. Bro, I'm going to keep it a buck. Does this guy look like he's a dating the specialist, uh, be honest, man. Come on. You know, where to meet girls. I don't, I'm just struggling. Tell me about what kind of girls you're going after. Like, what are you looking for in a woman? Mixed Asian, half white, half Asian. <laughs> big <laughs> thunder thighs. Bow! <laughs> nice rack. Bing bang. Big tit. Uh, tall. Like, taller than me, six foot tall. Uh, 130 plus IQ. 32 inch vertical. Jesus. No mm -hmm. tattoos, <laughs> debt free, virgin. He's capping, I say big, dude. Uh, I said big rack, right? You said big racks, yeah. Yeah, so that's about it. Women, they date up. So, what you have to do is you have to schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. The type of woman that you want has to have either two or three of these mental disorders. Everyone with auras. Wait, what? They have a roster. And in order to create a roster, you need to pray after mentally disabled women. <laughs> Let's be real. You're white, mm -hmm. you're pasty, you are milk. Yeah. You are vanilla. Mm -hmm. You have zero flavor. There is zero seasoning to you. How to manipulate an autistic woman. And that's where the hey, wait, is this guy being for real? How to manipulate an autistic woman? Bro, oh! this man should never be giving any advice. Comes in because the dark triad is quite literally black. No, you don't. You're not advanced yet for the dark triad bedroom game. When you meet an autistic woman, and this is obviously going to be after you black maxed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. After I have this course, black -maxed? it's going to tell you everything that you need to know about using the dark triad and also the female triad that I told you about earlier. And on top of that, it's gonna teach you all of the, all the tricks that you need to, <laughs> to take advantage of- He's the, even laughing, what? Schizophrenic, the full course is gonna be roughly $998.86. It is a big investment, but Bro, you can cop my ebook for ten dollars. That is way better than that. I need you to Link feel that investment, so that you can be invested in this course. Okay. You know, bro, that is you the worst seen... advice I've ever seen. The dark triad. Does somebody want a chunola? So today's treat of choice is a chunola. Shout out to Purina for making these. Free. Wait. Free. Go to your place. Um, horrible advice. Absolutely horrible. The dark triad preying on women that have mental disorders. No, the only thing I would say, if you wanted to want to get a chick, first of all, you need to be, you need to be something that attracts chicks, right? You need to be mentally stable, physically fit, financially fit. It, it, you get that, then women will come to you. You're going to be like a magnet. You chase women and they run. Some of the worst advice, especially from a younger guy, I can tell he doesn't get a lot of play. He's just trying to prey on guys to sell them a course. It's awful, dude. Absolutely awful. In this general social survey graph from 2018, but you probably okay. So see, bros, insane chart. Young male virginity on the rise, 27%. God, that's a lot. Young men driving the decline in sex. Goodness gracious. We've seen the updated version of 2022. The older graph shows that male virginity has supposedly skyrocketed since 2012, but the newer one shows when that Tinder came since out. then it has plummeted. I, like many other people, even recently. 
uh, surmised that this was an ongoing trend only getting worse, especially because it was pre-pandemic. Let's just say the rate of growth was consistent. If we would extend the graph to 2022, the number would be around 38%. But we're coming to find out wow. that maybe it was just a blip. Bald head bitch. Is this whole idea of an ever-growing incel population, this kid's great. women only wanting to engage with jazz, leaving many men to be virgins, some sort of illusion, a way of chronically online uh, men to project their own failures onto a larger societal problem? As the saying goes, misery loves company. Is there actually a rising virginity rate? Are more and more men becoming incels? How many incels are there actually? You'll find out in this video. Be sure to like and subscribe lookofthedead.com for merch. How is it that in 2018 the virginity rate was almost one third of all men, but in 2022 it plummeted? Uh, that doesn't even make sense post COVID. Well, the truth is that these general social study surveys have quite a low sample size. Better data sets with over 10 times the sample size show that virginity is steadily increasing very marginally. It's not nearly as sensational as the 2018 graph that went viral. Also in this graph, the rates between men and women are quite similar in following the same trend. Now, again, these are all surveys. It's not like scientists are running around gathering the fiber off of these guys' scrotums to actually uh, prove concretely whether or not they're getting laid. Okay, they could be lying. There could be a Hawthorne effect going on here, but it would be dishonest to say that's what's going on with this newer graph when everybody on the internet took the 2018 general social survey graph at complete face value. People will, on the internet, latch on to the most sensational, extreme data there is, even though it's far from the best. And then draw, you know, I did the same thing, drawing all these conclusions. And I mean, there is a slight trend going on, but it's not that crazy. In actuality, you might just be a fucking loser. So our incels <laughs> out. <laughs> God, this kid. Uh, let's go. Back, let's skip to this part where he talks about how many incels there actually are. So, how many incels are there actually? Some people would posit that they don't exist. That any man, if he tries hard enough, can find a partner if he just does the right things. As if human sexuality is completely moral and fair, and there's no genetic factors involved. There are some people, some true cells. They're called. Um, True self. In the sort of incel vernacular. Men with autism have a very high chance of being a virgin. I don't think it's really people's place to sit there and gaslight these guys when they're on a fundamentally different social wavelength. So they're valid. Life circumstances do produce genuine incels. But there aren't a lot of them. Shots, they're dude. actually relegated to the bottom percentages of men. Not like many people would claim that the bottom eight. Well, you guys have seen Love on the Spectrum, right? It's it's really tough for those guys and and girls. Um, so I, I don't know. I can I can definitely see how if you are autistic, it's a little bit tougher just because you're socially awkward. Or go get drunk enough to be sociable and pork a four. The if you haven't, it might sort of eat away at you. You might think it's way more uh, impactful and and better than it actually is but if you do it you realize there's nothing there it's quite pointless and kind of gross so i'm not technically involuntarily celibate and despite what the internet would tell you with cherry-picked bad data most men aren't but it's not like these these goofy internet words actually mean anything anyways let me know in the comments what do you think do you think most men are incels or do you th think most men are voluntarily celibate which would be a va uh, vol cell a vo cell vo cell versus incel let me know in the comments what do you guys think but does this mean that there are no legitimate gripes there are no good points raised by these guys is dating today completely fine and you're just a loser if you have problems with it i suppose it would be fair to call me an incel because when i look at postmodern dating when i look at the state of relationships today i do hate it 
I do despise almost everything that I see. I think it's deeply twisted and all fucked up. Allow me to define my parameters for a successful relationship. The longest running study of human happiness is quite thorough. It's been going on for 70 something years studying the same sample group. Frequently there are check-ins. They don't just give these people surveys. They do blood work, brain scans, test every measure of their mental and physical health, which are correlated. What did they find, you ask? Well, people with close personal relationships. Now, the original study group is longer. old now. This is almost always supplied by their life partner. Uh, during the intervening decades, the control groups have expanded in the 1970s. 456 Boston inner city residents were enlisted as part of the GLUEC study, and 40 of them are still alive. More than a decade ago, researchers began including wives in the Grant and GLUEC studies. The researchers also found that the marital satisfaction has a protective effect on people's mental health. Part of a study found that people who had happy marriages in their 80s reported that their moods didn't suffer even on the days when they had more physical pain. Those who had unhappy marriages felt both more emotional and physical pain. That's very interesting to see. I've heard that people that are in happy relationships live longer, so that makes sense chips by every metric we're better off physically uh here is i want to read this uh the surprising finding is that our relationships and how happy we are in our relationships has a powerful influence on our health said robert waldinger director of the study of psychiatrists at massachusetts blah 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 taking care of your body is important but tending to your relationships is a form of self-care too that i think is the revelation closer relationships more than money or fame are what keep people happy throughout their lives the study revealed i mean it makes sense to me Checks out. Mentally, they felt less... Part of a recent study, researchers found that women who felt securely attached to their partners were less depressed and more happy in their relationships two and a half years later and also had a better uh, memory functions. Those are frequent marital conflicts. Hmm, good relationships don't just protect our bodies, they protect our brains. Interesting. And those good relationships, they don't have to be smooth all the time. Some of the some of our octogenarian couples could bicker with each other in day, to, in, day in and day out, but as long as they felt that they could really count out on the other when the when the going got tough those arguments didn't take a toll on their memories goodness gracious physical read Levi pain and with their old age in feeling this physical pain they felt less demoralized by the pain having a strong relationship especially as you get older your body gets weaker it's quite important for your happiness yeah according to the longest running study of human happiness. So with that being said, a successful relationship is a lifelong bond with children, most likely sanctioned by marriage. So what are the chances of this relationship happening for me, for anyone like me? By the way, I use relationship in quotes because that, that's a new term. It used to just be, uh, oh, there's a girl, we're married. If you think about the term, it's extremely vague. It doesn't actually mean anything. We're in a relationship. And now it's gotten even more vague with a situationship. It doesn't even mit it, The relationship is already vague. Now it's a situationship. What the fuck are you even talking about? So how many so-called relationships succeed? Besides all this Chad lookism kind of goofy shit, this is the real black pill. There are two endings to a relationship. Breakup and marriage. As high as 85% of dating ends in breakups, 85% of people will have gone through a breakup. The average relationship lasts around two or three years. People will have hmm. gone through about five relationships before they get married. The marriage rate is just over 30%. Most people are getting married in their late 20s, early 30s. So yeah, the marriage rate is already quite low, but how many marriages themselves are successful? Again, success to me includes children. Uh, I'll mention here that less than half of Zoomer women even want to have children. 30% I don't know about the whole children thing. What do you guys think a successful relationship is? I think it's just two people that are coexisting, living a comfortable and happy life. 
that's fulfilling, whether that's with kids, whether that's without kids. Tony Robbins has talked about this. He goes, a lot of women feel like the only way they can unbuck their own lives is by having kids and getting that unconditional love from a child instead of having it from a partner. I believe if you find purpose in your life, you really shouldn't have to have a child to give you a sense of purpose, right? This YouTube channel is a testament of my own success. You guys give me a lot of purpose because I can come on here, I can share my knowledge, I can share my expertise, and then I get validated from you guys to say, hey, Levi, thank you so much. I appreciate this. Or, hey, Levi, you're funny. Or, hey, Levi, you have a big forehead. Or, hey, Levi, you have a crooked nose. <laughs> or, hey, Levi, you have this. And, hey, Levi, you're ugly and you're beat and you're stupid or whatever. I'm just kidding, but you get it. You smell what I'm stepping in. I'm just kidding, but seriously. So I think as long as you get validation from something, it could be extrinsically, it could be a child, it could be a career move. And as long as you feel fulfilled through that, I think that's what really matters. The marriages are childless. Childless marriages are more prone to divorce. Another 20% are only children. I'm including this because uh, growing up as an only child is, is quite sad usually and it fucking blows. You've probably heard Honestly, of I loved being an only child. Let me know. Let me know in the comments. Were you an only child or did you have siblings? Here's why I loved being an only child. And at least for me, I thrived in that environment. Because it forced me to go step outside of my shell and be extroverted and go make friends. A lot of kids, when they're only children, they could be introverted and just cocoon into themselves and not want to be extroverted at all and go, have, go make friends. But it forced me to go make friends and it forced me to be vulnerable at a young age and go out in there in the world and possibly face rejection which made me a better person which made me grow so i don't know what do you guys think do you think it's better to be an only child do you think it's better to be in, in a big family and have a bunch of siblings i had three half brothers i know i've talked about i am an only child but i do have three half brothers but the thing is by the time i was like six years old all of them were out of the house my the nearest brother in age is like 12 years older than me 10 or 12 years older than me. So by the time I was, you know, six years old, he was like 18 and he was out of the house. So that's why I always consider myself an only child. I remember a lot of my adolescent years, it just being me. I absolutely loved it. I got the most presents. But then when it came to growing up a little bit, I had to go out there and be vulnerable and meet people. Because if I didn't, I would just be alone, which I didn't want to be alone. And I guess for some kids that don't want to be extroverted, that could be kind of a, a curse, I guess. The divorce rate is about 55%. It isn't just the divorce rate, but the amount of marriages that arguably should be divorced on account of uh, certain factors. We can't know the exact number of these because it's, it's much more qualitative, but uh, dead bedrooms, they're just staying together for the kids. They don't want to go through the process of being divorced. So that's not very good. I'm not saying don't try. I, I'm still going to, but it looks pretty grim. You know, dudes obsessing over looks and not being able to get laid is kind of a chronically online diversion. This in itself is mostly driven by social ineptitude, which is a consequence of a lack of community. And uh, there is a lack of community because there's no family. Family is the prototype for all community. A return to community requires a return to family. A return to family requires a sacrifice in personal action. People always talk about returning to community, wanting that back, but the truth is we have been freed from communal bonds and pursuits. There's a tendency to offload the whole problem into something like... Well, I think if you feel like you don't have a sense of community, it's up to you to go out into the world and find your own community. A lot of people, the nuclear family has been completely broken up in the last few decades, I would say. And especially COVID it hit people really hard. We're not going over to your grandparents anymore. It's like everybody used to go to the grandparents and everybody used to have fun. And now it's up to your parents, the boomers and the boomers, you know, some, some of them aren't doing too well. They're not able to bring in the whole entire family. So, and then COVID also helped like separate everybody and realize that, oh, we can do it virtually or, oh, we can just do it ourselves. But I think it's your, it's your job to go find your community. If your family's not giving you that sense of community, which is a good baseline. And I agree with him in that regard. There's a good baseline of how you should have a rubric for the community that you're looking for. But I think if you, if your family doesn't have that familial bond, you should go out into the market and you should go figure it out. That's what I did. I was an only child. So I was like, let me go out. The first community I was a part of was the Pokemon community. Right. And then after that, I was in the Yu-Gi-Oh community. And then after that, I was in the skater community. And then after that, I was in the sports and band community. Right. Like I had my own little social circles as I grew up and I went and found those. And you have to do that into adulthood. 
Look at your profession, look at the people you were around, and always remember the amoeba effect. You're only as successful as the top five people you spend the most time with, so watch who you spend your time with. But if you're not happy with your social circle, the good thing is you can change it at any time. You can go out there and you can find people to go hang out with. There's groups everywhere. Get on Facebook, find a group, start going to social events. It's very easy to make friends. You wanna know, you wanna know the easiest way to make a friend? Walk up to somebody and give them a compliment. Oh my God, I, I absolutely, and even if you don't really like it, it might not be the most genuine thing, but you can just go and be like, oh my gosh, I really like your, I really like your tie. Where'd you get it? And then they start talking about themselves and then you can share some about yourself as well. And more than likely, they're going to be like, wow, this guy's interesting. And then now I'm going to go out and ask him a question as well. Dude, I do this all the time. This is how I have built my network. I just go give people compliments and ask them questions. And then therefore they want to know more about you. And if you're interesting, you have something to share. People will see you as a person of value. Man, today's episode was was totally totally off the rails here. This guy this guy's channel is hilarious. You should, you should go follow this kid. Um, he's got a bright bright uh, very bright future. I uh, hope you guys hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to cop the ebook, The Four Pillars of Personality. It makes you irresistible to women and respected by men. Shout out to you guys. We've sold like four or five copies in the past couple days. So shout out to you guys. Um, hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys tomorrow, gents. Peace.